G'day folks and welcome to Gourmet Shed and uh, as you can see what we've done here actually is uh, already converted these uh, original red brick uh, terraced house fronts into a pastel coloured uh, row of terraces. Now this is really quite simple it's just a matter of choosing your colours and your paints and masking up the, uh, the kit here before you start proper assembly and uh, it's a very simple um, way to uh, get this effect uh, you just mask up the area that you want to spray um, protecting the areas the other areas from the any overspray so that's that's very easy you shouldn't need any help with that I mean you could paint it by brush as well I suppose with, with matte pastel paints that's up to you <clears throat> and what happens is that um, we get this sort of totally different look to these terraces. Now, because I've um, uh, sprayed over the uh, the window uh, sills and the lintels and the door lintels and all that sort of thing, what I've done is uh, created some new ones on my drawing program. And as you can see, folks, these are just basic shapes. When we look at the uh, the window the sills here. Uh, this larger rectangle here is designed to go over the bottom of the window and this thin bit here is the exposed piece that you will see just below the window. All will become clear later on. Same with the uh, lintels over the doors. Uh, if I can zoom in a bit on this, which I can, you can see it's just uh, a group of basic shapes that are put together to give us this design. This is just printed on white A4 paper and they will stay white. I mean it's up to you what colour you want to do but I used just white ones in this case to complement the pastel colours on the uh, on the terraces. This is a close-up of the uh, the ones for the windows. Very basic shapes as you can see. And obviously that's the uh, window lintel there. And the doors. Just an accumulation of these same shapes here that have been uh, created in uh, the LibreOffice drawing program. So then it's a matter of cutting those out and uh, sticking them onto the, uh, the windows and doors as required. You'll also notice that I've downloaded um, one of these um, historical blue plates that you get in uh, England and this one in particular relates to uh, Mark and uh, Isambard Kingdom Brunel uh, because uh, Isambard Brunel is one of my heroes so I've given him somewhere uh, on my railway somewhere that he was born and you can see from a distance it's starting to look a bit better already. I also take the standard uh, card roof that comes with these kits and I uh, download from the internet um, slates, roof slates, and I print them out and then I cut a, a strip of slates to suit the length of the roof. Uh, if it's not long enough I just join them up, but I cut a strip of slates, two slates wide, and glue that on starting from the bottom edge of the roof here and then the next strip I glue over that but I overlap it by one slate so you've got this um, overlap all the way up. It takes a while to do it and when it's all dry um, I trim it up around the chimney uh, recesses and everything there. And you can see especially towards the top of the picture here that the uh, you can see the profile on the on the roof slates. If you want to go the whole hog folks you can just run a, a blade down the individual joins in the slates. Um, I've done that before and uh, it looks quite effective but you know I just couldn't be bothered this time. I think this looks good enough the way it is. Uh, you can see with uh, the gluing on my uh, window sills and everything they're not a hundred percent perfect but they'll do the job and they'll stand up to the three foot rule which is what we judge everything by. I've also downloaded, 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 I've downloaded um, images of curtains from the internet instead of just using the stock standard uh, images that come with these kits. 
just to get a bit of variety in there and to pretty much change what this kit looks like compared to all the other standard kits out there. Everybody's got the same looking buildings. Well, I wanted something different. And I mean, you can take that further with doors and everything if you want to. It's up to you. There's the little historical plate. I don't know what you call these things. Maybe somebody could let me know. It's very hard to read it, but that's a cruel close up there. Looks much better from a distance. And this is uh, where we're just testing it on the layout at the time, just to see how it fits in with the back scene and everything. Uh, on the right there, you'll notice my <laughs> what is now the um, news kiosk on my platform canopy. I don't know why I put that there at that angle. There must be a reason for it, but we'll never know now because I can't remember. And uh, there we are assessing what it looks like with the background and the way it butts up to it. Now these are rivets obviously folks and um, what I do with these is uh, turn down the, the tops here a bit um, to make them a bit smaller and then paint them brown and these are my chimney tops or chimney pots we should say chimney pots and they will go on these various chimneys here now you'll notice that these chimneys are not the standard Metcalf chimney print they've been overlaid with scale, scale scenes paper uh, very simple to put it on just glue it on wrap it around uh, trim off where necessary so you get a different look to the chimneys and you don't see those joins at the corner although it does become slightly rounded um, you can get over this by folding the paper and putting a crease in it but it's very tricky to get it right I think that looks okay And uh, obviously the uh, roof slates were all cleaned up and everything the uh, trimmed up so that they butt up to the uh, chimneys quite nicely. And uh, the um, ridge capping is also a download. Um, I found that on the internet somewhere and uh, I think possibly it might have, might have been just a single ridge cap. I can't remember now but... <laughs> You can get all sorts of stuff on the internet if you look for it and um, printed that out in the suitable lengths and uh, just stuck it on over the top of the um, slates. And you can see here that the chimney pots have gone on and I've also added some extra detail. I've used uh, an umbrella strut here as a strip of guttering, painted black of course. And the downpipes, I've just used a bit of, um, I think it's coat hanger wire, and in this case, bent to the right shape. Any of the joins are done here with very thin strips of um, masking tape, in this case, just wrapped around a few times and then given a drop of super glue either end to give that slightly rounded effect, and then it's all painted up and, and stuck on. That gives you a better better look at the side profile of the the downpipe there these are just stuck on with um, super glue usually at the joints here uh, that seems to be the most effective way to get it on again testing in position just to make sure everything is looking the way it should and again and again Obviously there's roadway to go in here yet. A lot of work to be done. And there's a stone wall going up just the top of the grass bank there. You can see here the, uh, the roadway's going in. I've got it, uh, this is um, wet and dry paper, but that's another subject. That's what I use for roadways on my railway. And when you glue it down, I pin it down as well, just to make sure the edges don't fold up. But anyway, that's another story. So this is the uh, the building pretty much done now. This is a fairly simple conversion, folks, and uh, looks totally different to the original red brick uh, that came in the kit. Details, details, details. Ah, you can see here the stone wall's gone up. And this end of the building here, I mean, it looks... It sticks out like a sore thumb against that background. 
So the way to disguise this is, well, what I did was I put a dirty great big tree there. And that sort of um, blends the, the building into this background here. It sort of obliterates a little bit of the edge of this building and the end of this building. But then all of a sudden, it changes the whole aspect. So we should have a picture of that coming up somewhere. And uh, looking better with the stone wall in, in front there. Ah uh, yes, here we are. The tree's gone in now. Um, this was a homemade tree, which is also another story. But uh, if you want to get something a bit bigger and different, you've got to make your own. And you can see how it sort of, I guess it sort of dominates the, the scene there, that tree. But it's also drawn your eye away from that that clean edge that the the low relief terrace had against that background and it, it looks like it just should should be there another view of it there so i think that's quite effective um, you, you can't use trees all the time but you must try and think of a way that you can uh, blend these things into the background if you can if it's possible it's a good way to go And just um, if you have a look at that, that's that's a bit of branch that I use on my trees as as a uh, tree trunk. And uh, the tree is actually, the, the core of the tree is just made up of twisted wire. But I drill a hole through the, um, the branch that I found and uh, that be then becomes the tree trunk, just to um, add a bit of realism to it, I suppose. Anyway, that's it, folks. That's... Uh, a fairly simple, easy way to change the look of your railway a bit, just by modifying a card kit. And it's not a, not a very big modification, so it should be fairly easy to do. Okay, I'll leave it with you. Cheers, Gourmet.